Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. Our recent discussion topics have mainly been about ethics, and now that we've covered the subject of ethics towards God in a sort of general sense, it's time to talk about ethics towards our fellow man. Certain elements of mortal ethics are similar to divine ethics, namely that the goal is to be honest and not be a hypocrite. And many of the end goals are the same as well. Being respectful to people, listening to them, and being grateful for the good things they do all contribute to mortal ethics in a similar way. But certain aspects of divine ethics don't really apply here. For example, we shouldn't necessarily obey our fellow man because we can't be 100% sure that they have our best interests at heart. And since no mortal is the standard for right and wrong, we shouldn't put other human beings first in our lives, or worship them. However, just because we recognize the importance of ethics, we believe that good is superior to evil, and that means doing our best to be like God, wanting what's truly best for everyone, even our enemies. No matter what we do for our fellow man, it should be motivated by the desire to help as many people as possible reach their true potential. This potential, in turn, is based on the way that we, as humans, are designed, and what kinds of things we're meant to grow and improve in. So, what are human beings meant for? Is there something they're obligated to do? Some kind of opportunity they're supposed to possess? First, because human beings have free will and the ability to make decisions for themselves, we know that part of our potential is in freely making good choices. That, in turn, means that our good is best served by allowing one another to make moral and upright decisions, an opportunity which many in today's world seek constantly to crush. There's also the fact that we mentioned briefly last time. When we do something to make ourselves hypocrites, like murdering someone, an action we wouldn't be able to take if someone murdered us, we do evil to them. And this is how we can determine what kinds of things people are entitled to, by virtue of their design. In modern society, this is often referred to as a right, and the basis of moral ethics has a lot to do with rights. However, mortal ethics isn't about claiming rights for yourself, much of the reverse, in fact. Mortal ethics is about recognizing that others have rights, and choosing to do your duty to respect and provide those rights to others. However, this is a subject that needs much deeper study, because right now the whole idea of a human right has been largely twisted and distorted in the public eye. Mainly there are two camps, people who say that a right is defined by their fundamental human nature, and people who say that a right is defined by society. I'm just going to come out and say this right now. The second group is dead wrong. Rights entail a moral obligation, and as we just established, God is the basis of morality, not society. Therefore, our moral obligations to one another are defined by the human nature which he built into us, not by some social consensus. I can use votes to declare that I have a social right to cheese, but that doesn't mean you're morally obligated to provide me with it. Still, this doesn't change the fact that in today's world, a lot of people claim to have various rights, and some of those rights are real rights, while others are just made up because they want something they have no right to. That's why our next topic will be, what are human rights? Which rights are true? Which are false? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.